On today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, using ProPresenter as digital signage. Hi and welcome again to the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week we talk about using software in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford and I'm your host. I'd love for you to join the conversation, by the way. This idea came from talking with uh, different people and so that's where I even came up with the idea of doing today's show. So without the interaction, shows like this just aren't possible. So don't hesitate to leave a question or comment underneath the video or drop me a line, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com. So without further ado, let's head on over to ProPresenter 5. So a couple of weeks ago, I was on a church tech hangout and we were talking about digital signage and the systems that uh, on the high end we were talking about were really expensive. So as part of that, I said, I think I'd just order a site license a ProPresenter, buy a Mac Mini, and then use a distribution amplifier to send video from the Mac Mini to a bunch of TVs all over campus. And Tim, who uh, is there, said, Paul, you do things with ProPresenter that I don't think even Renewed Vision thought of doing with ProPresenter. So I thought, well, let me put my money where my mouth is. Let me see if I can actually figure out how to do it. So that's what we're seeing here is we are seeing kind of a digital signage application. So you'll notice that I've got a background here. It's not moving right now, but it is a moving background. Now you see it moving. Now I'm going to pause it just because my uh, mid-2010 MacBook Pro and... Camtasia and ProPresenter all working together, a bit of an issue. So first off, I'm going to save this so that there's no other problems. Okay, so the first thing you need to do when you're doing this is you need to think, okay, think in layers. So while you could just have a looping slideshow, what's the fun in that, quite frankly? So what I've got here is I've got a looping slideshow here and I've got a looping slideshow here. They're moving at different rates and I'll show you how to do that. It's actually kind of a little hack trick. It's not all that hard once you know how to do it. Then I've got this that's staying static and then this background that's here. Now wouldn't it be great if I could, um, I don't know, put video right here, you know, like Maybe a uh, video from the service. Nah, that would be, well, watch what I'm about to do. So I'm going to turn this on. I hope that this isn't too much for my computer. I hope that it doesn't crash here. But we're going to turn on this prop. And there you see me. I'm going to wave. That's me. And I'm going to hold up three fingers now. And I'm going to take him down. And I'm going to hold up two fingers. And I'm going to take him down. So you see that uh, this is live video. It's kind of hard to see over here, but that's okay. So I also have, uh, I had another lesson where I showed you how to hack a ticker in there. I've got that in there so I could have uh, both of those because you can have more than one prop at a time. So... I could have that. It's transparent against this background, so you can't see it right now. I'll pull that out. And at the end of service, there's nothing to see on video, so we just uh, make that camera go away. And we're back to our loop. So let me show you how I did that. First off, you'll notice that this is the mask editor. 
one thing that I know about the mask editor is, and this is what got me thinking, it doesn't have to be just a black box. It can be an image. And that's what this is. This is a PNG, uh, short for Portable Network Graphics, and it has transparency. So I built this all in Photoshop and had these different boxes laid out, and they're transparent, but the lines are in here. And so is this gradient right here. But this isn't. So that's another PNG that I put on top of it. Just to show you what I did, that's my logo. And here we have my web address, which is text that I put on there. So this is actually three layers in the mask layer. Now, uh, let's go into the props editor, shall we? Now we go into the props, and I have just this corner set up for the eyesight, but remember that that is right below the mask layer so I just basically masked it out and it's it's actually a 4x3 because it's a mid-2010 MacBook Pro as I said so this also serves the function of masking out the bottom of this video here so that's good and I have a separate one for the ticker so I can turn them both on turn on just the ticker, turn on just the camera, or neither. So that's a pretty cool feature that you can have multiple props in the props layer. So let me remove that. And now I'm going to show you the kind of tricky trick that I did in the slides layer. So I didn't want to give it away too early. So here we actually only have four slides. They're set to advance every four seconds. I wanted each image up for eight seconds. So this is up for four seconds, then this is up for four seconds, and since they don't move, you can't tell over here. But I did change these. So this one is the same as this one at the end, and these two images are the same. So these two don't change at the same time even though they actually do. They actually change at the same time but you can't tell that they change at the same time. And the way I did that was instead of making these <coughs> excuse me, instead of making them foregrounds which I suppose I could have done but a foreground would have automatically taken up the whole screen um, I could also make these in Photoshop or the GIMP or whatever to where they work perfectly fine like that. Uh, instead of doing that, what I did was I went right click, edit slide, and I just clicked here to add the image to the slide. And I did that twice for each one. Now, the important thing is their size has to matter exact, match exactly and their position needs to match exactly. So what you do is you just click on the image you want to do and then you head over to this tab which I'm already there because I've been messing with it and XY is positioning and WH is width and height. So you'll notice what it is on this bigger image it's 1200 by 590 and on the little image it's 750 by 280 and this is a uh, 1280 by 720 image here so going back here 1200 plus oops 750 is 1950, 1920, yeah, well it's cropped off the side, the whole image is actually wider than this, but anyway, you see that, and it preserves this little rectangle that I have here for the sake of this. Now, this isn't perfect, I haven't gotten it exactly the way that I want it, but you can see how this could be the basis of digital signage that you have in your building where you have a ticker that's 
actually a video with transparency, ProRes 4444 video running along the bottom at all times. You could change out the logo. You could potentially put something on top instead of a logo. Maybe you have this exact PNG uh, in the mask layer, but you have one with the logo and one with thanks for visiting our church, for example. And you can change those out pretty easily and just make it easy. The downside of this is that this is not going to work when you need to send specific things to specific monitors. But if you've got a site license and a few iMacs laying around, there's no reason why you couldn't have a few of them slaved together and working like that. And for probably not counting the TVs and wiring and DAs and stuff, but just the iMacs, um, for maybe, not iMacs, uh, Mac Minis, maybe two, three thousand dollars, you could have a pretty beefy digital signage system that was able to do things where, you know, you had maybe four iMacs and you had specific areas where each iMac was designated. You could take it up a, a notch and have a matrix switcher or put it on a closed circuit digital cable system inside your church and just change the channel. Any of those are possibilities. So this is kind of a fun thing that you can do to expand what ProPresenter is supposed to do because it's really not supposed to do this, but that doesn't stop me from doing stuff like that. So you can do this and um, expand what ProPresenter does with an interface you're already familiar with and really, really get every bit of value from your buck with ProPresenter. And uh, on a side note, since you've got a site license because you're going to need this Mac running ProPresenter while your Mac in Big Church also runs ProPresenter, so you need a site license, that means that every ministry in the church can use ProPresenter. So the kids can use it, the youth can use it, all concurrently, no problem. So that's another good thing that Renewed Vision has done is once you get into two Macs, it's the same cost as a, as a site license or two licenses, maybe one's a PC, one's a Mac, uh, that's the same as a site license and you can go back and forth with the site license. So that's something else to consider. So I hope that helped you and uh, I hope that you enjoy using ProPresenter for digital signage. Well, I hope that helped you. That might be a little more than even Renewed Vision had in mind from ProPresenter. And I recognize that you're not going to send different things to different displays with this particular format, but if you've already got a site license, adding in an iMac to do this is very inexpensive and it'll uh, perhaps provide some high-end abilities to save your church a little money. Now, it's not perfect, takes a little work, you got to think outside the box, but I think you'll find it interesting. If you like this content, don't hesitate to head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, and there you can pick up a copy of my top five tips for ProPresenter, or last week's episode, I've got a PDF all about installing the stage display in ProPresenter 5. Either one of those are yours for the asking, and you get a free copy of my email newsletter, and that's cool too. So head on over there and get that. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.